What is up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Brico TV. This is your host, Brico. Today I'm gonna show you how to make your own cassette tape. <laughs> If you're new to this channel, I'm a sucker for music, art, and technology. So if you're into any of those things, hit the like button and subscribe. Cassette tapes were invented in 1963 in Belgium by the company Philips. Why cassette tapes though? Somebody asked me recently. And that's a really good question because nowadays we have Spotify, iTunes, SoundCloud, Bandcamp, and so many platforms that have made digital streaming so easy. Even though I like listening to stuff on my iTunes and just like going for a run and stuff like that. I like collecting stuff so there is something valuable for me to have a collectible object. They are physical, they are collectible, they are nostalgic you can touch him you can feel him you can look at the pretty colors I also like to get involved in the whole experience sometimes reading the lyrics sometimes looking at the art this was the first format of music that was introduced to me they have a vintage quality to them the tape gives character to the music it's very similar to what happens with vinyl it's easier to achieve these textures with analog formats like cassette tapes not to mention that making a tape at home is way easier easier than making your own vinyl record. There you go, that's why I love cassette tapes. And now, let's move on with the tutorial. Step number one. Okay, so step number one is writing everything down. It kind of sounds like a boring step, but it's really important. Many people will tell you this when you take design classes, art classes, or any kind of planning that you need to do is way better if you first plan the project and then start executing your ideas. So it's really helpful to carry around a notebook with you because you never know when inspiration is gonna come and you can write on a napkin and stuff like that. I've done it before, but it's better if you keep your ideas is organized. Over the years I have filled so many notebooks. I have a couple favorite ones. Uh, I always carry around my field notes because they are very small and they are practical and you can just like put them in your pocket and they're ready to go. And I also have this really nice moleskin that my wife got for me. If you're interested in any of those notebooks, I'll leave the link in the description down below. So at this point, you should already know how long is your album. For example, mine is 60 minutes long, actually like 58. So each side, I had to buy cassette tapes that are 30 minutes in each side. How are you gonna start with your slower songs or with your fast songs? Do you want people to get excited right away? Or do you want to like slowly ease them in into the vibe of your music? And that would make your ideas stronger and the final product better. And that's only regarding the sound. What about the artwork? Uh, what color palette are you gonna be using? Is it gonna be uh, digital photography? Is it gonna be a collage? Is it gonna be like some mixed media? You have to think about all of these things before you start working on your project. Step number two, design. This part is very important because it's how you're gonna present your product to your clients. Your design needs to be something that catches the eye. The internet is a very powerful tool and people are gonna buy your music according to what you present to them. So if you put a little extra effort in your art, it's gonna go a long way because nowadays people are on their cell phone all the time swiping away and you only have very few seconds to catch their eye. So if your design is really good, it's gonna make them stop and look at it and potentially listen to your music, download it, buy it, and make you a millionaire. That's how it works, right? My design started with an idea. In step one, I wrote it down, and I decided to go for a collage. It's a digital collage, I would say, but it's a combination of analog, or just normal, you know, paper, and Photoshop and Illustrator. So let me show you what my collage looks like. Nothing really fancy here. These are newspaper cutouts and magazines. I knew I wanted to represent a deluge. I had an idea of going with something apocalyptic, so I decided to picture a 
flawed. Kind of, kind of like going along with the story of Noah and his ark and the flood and all of that. So I just look for white and blue paper cutouts, and this is uh, this is Funcore. So you know you can buy this anywhere really. It's super cheap, and it's kind of fun working with your hands. Give it a shot. So I scan my collage at 300 DPI. That is really important. If you're gonna scan anything that is going to be printed, you want it to be really high quality at 300 DPI. I would recommend. Why? Because you can get away with 150 DPI or 75 DPI on web because people are just looking on a screen. But once you print something, you can really look at the details and everything. So if you scan at really high quality, that's going to be your best option. For the second part of my design, I have a passion of traveling the world and even though right now it's kind of iffy and I don't know what's going on, I hope that I can get to travel soon. But anyway, I've been to India, I've been to France, I've been to many places in the world and I'm really thankful for that and I always carry my camera with me so I've taken so many pictures all over the world. So I knew I wanted to represent the world and the places and the statues and the monuments that I've taken pictures from and put them all together in this collage. So come with me to the computer and I'm gonna show you the next steps. Okay, so here we are in the computer. Here's the first picture. This is Zuzaman. What you do is, in this case anyway, is that you go over here and you take the pen tool and then you trace the silhouette of your subject. This is just like a quick one, but let's just pretend you go all the way around. And then I'm not being cautious at all, but this takes a long time. You actually have to like, uh, you know, zoom in and stuff like that so that you can really see. Click here and then pull and drag. It creates a curve, as you can tell. That way, your line is not just like 90 degrees all the time, so sharp. And then once you close the circle or, you know, the area, remove it from the background and paste it anywhere you want. So I did the same with this picture of Notre Dame that I've taken and this picture of this poet statue in India when I went to um, Kanyakumari, uh, really close to Sri Lanka. And then here when I, my mom came from Mexico to visit me and my wife and we took her to the Statue of Liberty, New York City in general. But anyway, you get the idea. I cropped all of these like interesting, iconic pictures all around the world. We also have this, which is my high res scan of my collage that I showed you before. Once you have all of that, then you can bring it into Photoshop or um, in this case, I brought it into Illustrator. For some reason, I just, uh, I prefer working in Illustrator because it takes your shapes and makes them a vector. And what that means is that when you scale them up or down, it's not gonna pixelate your image. So that's really good, especially for printing. I brought this head over here put it on top of the glass. You can see Notre Dame in the background, other thingy that I put over here. I cropped the scan and replaced them, you know, like kind of like patching it, remaking it. You're gonna need a template. I watched a tutorial. It was really helpful, actually. I love that tutorial and he gave this template away for free. I really like it, except that when I went to print, the print was a little smaller than the case and it looks a little awkward uh, so I modified the template just like make it a little bigger so that it would cover the whole case so this is the main area you can see these lines right here this is the main area for your cover and this is the spine right here and this is the fold that goes inside and it's usually where people put the name of the songs there but you can always get creative i um i looked at a whole bunch of cassette tapes and uh just to get an idea of what i wanted to do with mine i went back again to illustrator and brought everything in here's the template what i did also here is all my you know the title of my Moniker Burko and the title of my album Majesty. I'm using the font Roboto. 
I think it's nice. I like the roundness of it, and it's kind of like a uh, simple, like Helvetica. It's like a sans serif, but um, I think it's elegant, and it, the art itself is pretty crowded, so you don't want to compete with that. You don't want the background to be so busy, and then your font to be really busy because then you confuse your audience. If your background is really busy, I would recommend to have a clean sans serif font. I literally just took this tool, which is the line tool, which you can find right here under the rectangle tool and then right click in the segment tool. Took that tool and made lines right here. So these are literally black lines. Why? Because it just makes it so much easier to fall. So trust me, you want to have some sort of guide right here. Um, you don't have to do exactly what I did. For me, it worked pretty nicely. Give yourself some sort of reference when uh, it comes to the spine. So this is the main artwork and then you're going to fold this and then you're going to fold this. I chose the color orange. This is a warmer tone and in contrast with the background is blue. So that, that's a high contrast. People don't necessarily know all of you know, that uh, color palette is making me more aware of this art form, but that's just how graphic design works. And then over here, I took this section, put an overlay again with the rectangle tool. I traced a rectangle, but I made it dark. Why? Because it was hard to read with this overlay, it just makes the orange pop. You should know that if you're going to print this, and that's what we're aiming for, this file has to be high res. When you're going to print, just make that a habit. How do you create a high res file? Well, you go to File, New, and Illustrator, Photoshop. It's pretty much the same. And you have this dialog box right here. You select the size, the orientation, blah, blah, blah. CMYK is really important. That is the color format that you want for print. If you had RGB, that's mostly web. So you want CMYK. C stands for cyan, M starts for magenta, Y stands for yellow, and K stands for black, which are the four colors that the printers use to print. And here it is, high res. This is where you wanna set your resolution. Screen, as you can tell, 72 PPI. If this was for uh, Facebook, Instagram, something like that, you can get away with that. Medium, it's also good for web. But for print, like I said, make it a habit. 300 PPI. Like I told you, I downloaded this template from a YouTube video and it was pretty helpful. I really like it, but like I said, it was too small. So I will leave in the description down below my file that I used for my printing that worked pretty nicely. Okay, step number three. Turn it into existence. What do I mean by that? Well, so far, you have kept your ideas in your mind, in your notebook, and in your computer. Now it's time to make it into a physical object. How are you gonna do this? Well, first of all, you need to know your budget. How much money are you willing to invest into your project? These are some numbers that you gotta crush. You gotta see like if you spend $10 and then if you only get five back, is it worth it? Well, sometimes it is. Creating for me is the part that gives me all the pleasure. And if people enjoy it and buy it, that's all I want, really. Just think about how much money you're willing to put out for your art and if it's worth it. I have put 100, 200, 300 dollars into projects before where I have made CDs of my music and actually it was a really good payback, I think. The first one I got, like, $2,000, invested $300 and got $2,000 back, you make the math, that was pretty good. And it just helps you connect with people. Okay, for my tape, I chose this metallic blue tape that I'm showing you before, and it came with a case. Obviously, the print, I did it myself. I mean, it's pretty obvious why I picked this tape. It complements my design. It's blue as well. That's the main hue of my cassette. And I just like the metallic finish. It looks pretty nice. And it wasn't that expensive. If you like this metallic finish, I'll leave the link in the description down below. They also have silver, green, and red the last time I checked. And they are pretty affordable, I think. 
I paid like somewhere around $34 for 10 pieces. The audio quality is actually pretty decent too. The brand is Fidelity, but like I said, I'll leave the link in the description down below. The only thing that was a really pain in the butt choosing this specific tape is that the metallic finish doesn't let anything stick to it. I was pretty pumped on labeling the actual tape and I even had a rubber stamp custom made with my artist name so that I could print it on the tape. Unfortunately, the ink that comes, you know, those little pads with ink for rubber stamps, it doesn't stick to this metallic finish. So I had to try so many different methods. Okay, so here is the rubber stamp that I had custom made. It's pretty cool. I think it's worth it going the extra mile. So even if it didn't work and want to plant first, I'm still gonna stamp the tapes in like a secret place. Cause I just think uh, the more detail you put into your art, it's gonna pay off. And then I went to Michael's and I got this silver marker and it's pretty cool. I love it. It's by the brand Pilot and I'm keeping it for sure. I love it. Didn't work, didn't stick to the surface. I also tried like a regular Sharpie, didn't work. Finally found this oil marker by Sharpie in white and voila. Guess what? It actually worked. That was pretty cool and then I thought hey, that's what I'm gonna do now with my tapes. I'm just gonna label them by hand. And I did that. I labeled them by hand. Ended up scratching that idea because everything else looked very polished in my opinion, but the actual labeling looks kind of tacky. So finally, I went back to the store and got these. Bought like five sheets of it and uh, it finally worked. One thing that I would recommend is to stay positive. It's a pretty long process. Uh, I've been doing this tape for a while. I just really wanted to make it excellent. DIY doesn't mean bad quality in my opinion. This is what it looks like with the stickers and I'm happy with that. I think it looks clean, it looks polished, it looks fresh, so. There you go. Okay, and the last thing that I wanna talk about on this step is printing. Printing for this project is super important because it's how you're gonna present your product and it's the cover of your item and you wanna sell it, you want people to like your product, you want people to listen to your music. So this is the gateway for people to learn about your music. It's the main door, it's the entrance. They're gonna look at it first if they go to your website or wherever, Spotify, iTunes, wherever your music is being promoted and they're gonna look at the art first. If I'm discovering a new artist, what I do is like I scroll down the website and then I see something that catches my eye and I click on it. This is your selling point, so it's super important that you print in high quality. You wanna take it to a shop that they know what they're doing, unless you really know what you're doing. And if you have a laser jet printer, I would recommend that. Otherwise, I I wouldn't print it on a regular normal piece of paper that's just my opinion if you want to do that there's no judgment and i understand if you don't have enough money this is the paper that i use for printing it's glossy finish 11 by 17 a hundred pound glossy paper it's super cheap so money's not even an excuse because it's like literally like i think this was like five cents a piece. So I did a limited edition of 20 tapes. So printing cost me like $15 top, so. So like I said, it's always better to go the extra mile and look how cool this looks. I'm gonna hang it on my room and there's something about having your art printed that makes you feel really satisfied and also lets other people look at your art. And it makes me so excited to look at this. This is the fruit of my labor. So moral of the story, print your stuff. It looks really cool. Step number four, recording. Recording is the most important part of your process because cassette tapes are made for audio and this is what we're doing. We are trying to put our own music into a cassette tape so people can listen to your tape. Duh. 
there are a few things that you should know about the quality of your file. At this point, you should already have all your track list selected, all your music made. There are a couple of things you can do. You can just do a mixtape with other people's songs and record it into a cassette to give it away, give it to your grandma, give it to your girlfriend, whatever, or keep it for yourself. This is not a tutorial on how to make music, but also if you're interested in how to start making your own music, leave it in the comments if you want me to make a video about making your own music. So these are the specs for your file. I personally use Logic X Pro. I call it Logic X Pro, but it's Logic 10 Pro. You want your file to be a WAV file. You want your file to have a bit depth of 16. And you want it to be 4.1K hertz. Now this sounds like a lot of nerdy stuff and trust me you just want that. That is the industry standard for CDs. You can do this in Pro Tools, you can do this in Reason, you can do this in Audacity, you can do this in Fruity Loops. Any music software would do this for you. So just have those files ready. That's gonna give you the best quality for your music. So here's the fun part. How are you gonna transfer those digital files into a tape? Well, let me show you. Okay, so you're gonna need something like this. This is called a tape deck. There are many ways to get one of these. You can go to eBay, you can go to Amazon. If you're lucky like me, I went to an auction here in upstate New York. I only paid $11 for this baby and I am so excited. This is a Yamaha cassette deck K90 and I looked it up online and it's more than $100. It's also pretty old so it's hard to find one that works completely. You just have to be diligent to finding one of these. They are sometimes pretty expensive like I was looking into getting a Tascam they just released a new one like a couple years ago because cassettes, you know, are coming back to a degree. And uh, it's $500, so be patient. At this point, some people might argue that this is obsolete technology, but still in great shape, works perfectly fine, and I love it. It's beautiful. You're gonna need a cable like this, RCA cable with the other end being a quarter inch. So you can hook it up to your iPod, your phone, your CD player, whatever you wanna use. So this goes in the back, your tape deck player. And in this case, I'm just gonna be using my phone. So what you need to do next is bring your cassette and put it in. And then press play on whatever song and then press record and as you can tell we're getting signal right here so that means that the music is playing and now it's being recorded into our cassette now you can see how the signal is coming in pretty strong so you can adjust that signal just by bringing it down right here this is the level knob and you want it in the yellow, not the red. And voila, that's basically how you use the tape deck. The other way is use one of these old school radio cassette recorders. This one in particular is pretty nice. It's made by Sony. It's only $73 on Amazon. I'm blown away by the audio quality that this little thing has. It's, uh, it's plastic, it's all plastic. It uh, shouldn't work that nicely, but man, the bass, Specifically, I was having trouble. I tested a couple tape decks and they would record but the bass was missing The bass was hollow and it was not as my music was not as punchy as I recorded it So obviously you don't want that so this little guy. I'll leave the link in the description I am gonna say though. I had one for two years. It broke. It still plays tapes, but it won't play a CD the radio, the tapes, everything else works nice, but the CD player doesn't work, so that's a bummer. But I got another one, I mean, they're kind of like recyclable, and it works really nicely that I just had to get another one because I couldn't find anything else better. And the way you do it with this one is very simple. You um, make a CD, you know, you burn a CD with your tracks, and I burned two CDs for my album, Side A and Side B. That way I can time them 
perfectly. I know that each side of my tape is 30 minutes, so I have to selectively pick the tracks in a manner that fits 30 minutes in one CD and 30 minutes in another CD, side A and side B. And how you do it here is pretty simple as well. You put in your tape in there, and then you go to the CD function and press play and it's gonna start playing the CD and after that you just there's a uh, two buttons here for the tape one is play and one is record you want to press both at the same time and that means that your tape is now being recorded so yeah those are just a couple ways of recording your music into a tape there are multiple ways out there so check them out see what works better for your budget but you really can't go wrong with those two options that I show you I tested them myself and I'm pretty satisfied with the quality one thing you should know though before moving into the next step is that you should let your tape run for about like five seconds I seriously just press record and count it one two three four five and then press play on the music that I wanted to record because the tape at the beginning has a special part that doesn't record and just helps the tape work better but just trust me on this one don't start recording right immediately because you're gonna lose part of your track it actually happened to me a couple times so that's how I figured it out step number five assembling Okay, so we're almost done with our project. What you're gonna do is take the print of your design and you might wanna use a guillotine like the one I have here at work and don't worry if you don't have one. If you have access to one, that's excellent. But if not, don't sweat it. You can just use regular scissors. That's perfectly fine. I actually did like half of my cassettes with scissors at home because I just didn't want to drive over here. Both of them work perfectly. And remember in step number two when I was creating the design, the template, how I use the black lines to guide me so I can know where the art ends and the spine begins and so on. Here's how it comes handy because usually you would have to measure it, use a ruler or something and then make the fold. But in this case, since I already put in the design two black lines for guides, I don't need any other reference. And also, you might want to use one of these paper folder helpers. They are very cheap and they just help you fold your paper nice and crisp. Again, link in the description if you want to buy one of these. So now, you have your tape, you have your folded print. So now, basically, all you need to do is fold it into place, put the tape right in there, and voila! Now pat yourself in the back because you just made your own cassette tape. <laughs> step number six, promotion. Okay, so this is our last step, and it's really important if you want to sell your music. There are many ways you can promote your music, like social media, blogs, and websites, for example. We live in a digital era where we have a lot of tools accessible for us, and some of them are even free. Yes, you can do the traditional way and just knock on your neighbor's door and say, Hey, I made a cassette tape. Would you like to buy it? Let me show you what I actually did for myself. I've been using Bandcamp for a really long time, and I'm actually really satisfied with their platform. It looks nice, it looks clean, it's free, it lets me upload my music without any problems. So many people have listened to my music because of them and when you sell something they take a small percentage of the amount so I think overall it's a pretty nice thing they do. For this specific project they are super helpful because not a lot of people have a tape player or a tape deck or somewhere where they can actually listen to your cassette tape because let's be honest it's kind of niche so people might buy your tape because it just looks really cool on their shelf but never listen to it unless you give them a download code ho, 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 ho. I personally love when I buy vinyl or tapes and they include a download code because I can put it in my phone I can put it in my iPod so that way if I want to listen to my music while I'm going for a run where I'm working out I don't have to bring my record player or my tape deck because that would be ridiculous so having the digital files is definitely a plus for me so in that regard I love Bandcamp because they can help you out making the codes it's super easy with them so I printed a whole bunch of codes that 
it look like this and they even personalize it with your logo or the art of your album whatever you choose and I find that really handy when it comes to cassette tape so basically you just stick your cassette tape and your promo code and you are ready to go one more satisfied customer so that way they have a physical object and they can also listen to your music if you're interested in buying one of my cassette tapes i am really thankful and i'll leave the link in the description down below thank you so much for your support it means the world to me but the most exciting thing for me is like sharing my art with somebody else and getting them to listen to my music and liking it that's what really satisfies me okay so we've reached the end of this video i hope you like it i hope this information is useful to you if you're looking into making your own tapes if you love music it's a really fun project so I recommend you do it because you're gonna have a blast and you're gonna learn a lot of things so leave me a comment if you have any questions about any of the steps and if I can help you out with the process I hope you like this video so like this video or dislike it share it with your mom share it with your grandma share it with your girlfriend share it with someone that likes music activate the bell if you don't want to miss any of my future videos and if you're not subscribed to my channel, what the heck? Subscribe! But seriously, it helps a lot. So like I said before, all the links are in the description. If you want to purchase any of the gadgets that I've shown you that will make your job a little bit easier, the link to buy my tape is also in the description if you want to support my art. But if you're broke and you don't have any money, I will live the full album stream also. So you can just listen to it on YouTube for free because that's also really helpful and I would really like you to listen to my music and give it a shot. Maybe you love it. Okay, at this point, I think I'm just rambling. I don't think I have anything else to say so this has been a pleasure this is your homeboy Burko end of transmission